Hello, I am your Walker X, and let's learn to play Sword of the Stars. We're going to play a custom single player game on the disc map with six players, one of every species. We've gone ahead and set the number of stars to 120. That way it's not too big. You've got about 20 stars for each individual race. We're going to play against a normal AI. You can go in and tweak the AI of every individual player, but we're not going to be fiddling with that. So let's go ahead and name the game. And we are going to play as humans with green, this badge, and that avatar against one of everybody else. So there's our Hiver, Tarka, Lear, Zul, and Merigi. Now, just in case you wanted to, this is where you would change the AI of this individual player. You can do this for each and every one, just like their treasury, colonies, and technology. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Okay, so here we go. You can rotate your map around by holding down right click and moving the mouse. That way you can get a better view of what you're looking at. To focus on different things, just push your middle mouse button over whatever star system you want to look at. This one here is special. It's our home world. It's one of the few size 10 worlds out there. And the only one you get that has 200 infrastructure, unless you capture another player's home world without damaging the infrastructure. It's got a star around it so that you can recognize it really easily and it leads with some node lines out to other planets that you can check how far away they are by left clicking and dragging towards that particular star. So the first thing we need to do since we don't have any ships at all is design some ships of our own and the ones that they have they work fairly well, but I don't like them too much because they all come with Gauss Cannons. Gauss Cannons are really good. They do a decent amount of damage and have a really high rate of fire, but they're not very accurate. So we're going to go with Red Lasers that are almost twice as accurate. And in the early game, accuracy makes all the difference. So instead of changing each individual weapon system by left-clicking and left-clicking, if you left click on the weapon system and then right click on the one you want it'll put that into every slot that's the same kind that's gonna save a lot of time and heartache later so let's go ahead and rename these I named my scout Sabine just because I like naming destroyers after rivers it... whatever naming convention you have run with it yes, sir. And it won't take too very long until you'll start to recognize what the names mean offhand. You don't have to go with the you don't have to go with the ones that they automatically give them because that can get really confusing when you've got two or three different armor ships that have different weapons loadouts and serve different purposes, but they all say armor Mark Three, Mark Four, Mark Seven. Whereas I can take a look and know that a Sabine is a scout and a Brazos is a laser armor, where a Blanco is going to be my Gauss armor. And just give it time and you'll come up with your own. Alright, now that we've got some ships designed, let's go ahead and build them. Now if you look down here you'll see your little treasury bar with how many credits you have and as you add more ships to your queue it starts to get more and more yellow which is the money you're spending on your ships and build too many and it'll go into the red and the interest on debt is a lot higher than the interest on your actual income so it's going to take a long time to get out of debt and we want to put all of our planetary budget into ship construction whatever isn't used goes into trade anyway so not a huge deal we can only build five Sabines in the first turn that's not a huge problem I like to send them out in groups of six because that's as many as you can have on the field without command and control but we'll get to that later so let's look into our research now you can see here 
that you've got a pretty nice tech tree and it's randomized every time. There's certain core technologies that you are guaranteed to have like red lasers, gauss cannons, FTL economics, Waldo units. You'll get them every time. The rest is randomized by roles for every race. Some races are better at certain things than others and Waldo units is a really nice starting technology because it gives us an increase to our industrial output and reduces the ship construction cost. More ships faster and cheaper. Can't go wrong with that. And I like to turn my planetary budget up to about 50% at the start of the game so that I can get those really nice core technologies out faster. So that's pretty much all we can do on the first turn. So let's go ahead and end turn. You've got three seconds to cancel that and you just click end turn again while it's counting down and it will stop that in case you realize oh man I need to do that other thing. Now we need to build some more Sabines. In the early game it's all about scouting everything you can and getting a decent colony base but you don't want to just colonize anything that you can because everything has a climate hazard rating and will cost you certain amounts of money to actually be able to colonize it. Order placed, Commander. And if you colonize three or four, five hundred climate hazard worlds, you're gonna be in trouble. Because then all of your money will be going into supporting those colonies and you won't have any money for research or fleet maintenance or any of those things. System. And you can see where all your money is going with this little pie chart right here. And if you click it, it brings you into your colonies and budget along with a couple of nice tabs across the top. But this is the important one for right now until we unlock trade. It tells you what you're getting, where it's coming from, where it's going, and the expected change. And we just want to keep building new ships and sending scout fleets out until we find things that are worth colonizing. Shipyards getting up. Okay, we've got an unknown menace at Junction. Hopefully this is just a asteroid monitor that we can take over through a special project or an alien derelict that we can strip of weapons for some extra research, but it's the swarm. And it looks like this is going to be a really nice world once we can clear the swarm off of it. But we're not going to be able to do much against the swarm with red lasers and no command and control ships. There's just too many of them, and they are too small and too fast to do much of anything about without at least green lasers and command and control, preferably some point defense, but we'll, we'll get there. Okay. So this is the combat screen. You got your ships right here. You can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. Just like in the star map, you can focus on different things with the middle mouse button, or you can press the F key, and that will also focus on what you're checking out. You can highlight multiple ships, and just a few, press control, standard kind of stuff. Now you can give them orders to target individual things, and you can tell them to face the target, broadside, face the direction they came in on, all kinds of nifty fun stuff. Now, the swarm has little bitty bugs and bigger bugs. And then they have an asteroid right here. This, this is the hive. This is where they come from, and sometimes this has a queen inside of it that's going to come out and give you a hard time when you do finally break up the hive. And you can see that that didn't take too very long until we were just done. System update. So we're going to put a note on this star system that it has the swarm. And you can see that that gives us a little exclamation point, because eventually this little combat symbol will go away. And we know we want to get rid of the swarm, because that's a really nice planet right there.
So we just keep adding exploration fleets. And keep pushing further and further out into space to find a good colonizable planet. System update. Now you can see that this planet has a climate rating of well over a thousand, which is really far outside of our colonizable habitat, so the cost is prohibitive. Whereas this one is just really high and will cost us 64,000 credits per turn out of a... It'll cost us almost a fourth of our budget per turn to colonize this planet, and it's only a size one with less than 4,000 resources. That's, that's not good. Fleet moving so let's keep moving out, pushing further and further out to find out just what's out there, and hopefully there's going to be something better sometime soon. Construction project initiated. System update. Okay, well this one looks big. Okay. Thieves is a really nice planet. It's only going to cost us 16,000 per turn to colonize it, and it's a size 7 with 6,300 resources. That's that's really nice. So we're going to go want to go in and make a colonizer fleet. And I like sending six of them in with a tanker. Because they don't have as much fuel as your Sabines do. Your extended range is always going to have way more fuel than your regular ships do. That's why they're called extended range ships. Because they can go a lot further. Most human ships at this level of technology only have a range of 9. And luckily, down is only 8.3, and Thieves is only 6.5 away from there, so we can definitely make that. And our research is now done for Waldo units, and we know we have the swarm right there, so I'm going to want to get green lasers, which isn't going to take too very long. And immediately after that, we're going to want battle computers, which is going to take a little bit longer, but will give us our first command and control ship, and that's how we're going to field a lot more ships at one time. Now it's going to take us a couple of turns to build up our colonizer fleet, and we've got another random encounter. Okay, here's an asteroid monitor. These are dreadnought-sized asteroids with a lot of weapons on them. You might be able to strip everything off of them in the early game, but probably not. The really nice thing about them, though, is if you go into your research under the special projects, you can take control of the asteroid monitor and get it on your side, which is going to be just just really nice and it's on a planet that we can eventually colonize so we want to get as far away from it as fast as we can and down here where you've got your crossed guns if you click on the guns it'll turn into a little bird and as soon as you get far enough away that it cannot target you anymore the asteroid monitor will also choose ceasefire most times and then you'll be able to get out of this conflict. Then we just have to wait until we take control of the asteroid monitor and we can colonize this planet. Now you can hurry this up by speeding up time by holding down control and pressing page up. And you can slow time down with control and page down. Unfortunately, asteroid monitors do come with planetary missiles and they hit like a ton of bricks but now we're far enough away that it's going to leave us alone. System update. Size 3 asteroids, 6,000 resources, that's, that's not too bad. Ah, oh, but it blew up the web. We lost the engine on this one, so we're going to add him to a new fleet and go ahead, special scuttle. This is how you 
get rid of old ships or ships that you cannot repair and are just too far gone. And we're going to move the rest of this fleet over here to get them off of the asteroid monitor. We don't want to get into combat every single turn where we're just going to keep losing ships. Now if you come up here to special projects, you see monitor control at Daphidia. Start the project and you'll start taking control of this asteroid monitor. Now it's going to be another turn until we get our colony ships up and running, so we're just going to go ahead and skip through this real quick. System update. And Solaris is a nice planet, but it's still a little high. We're going to see if there's not anything a little better. And we can't go straight to our home world without going through this swarm planet. So what we're going to do is route around it by moving the mouse where we want to go first, pressing control and clicking there, and that's how you set up waypoints. And we can't make it that far. Course plotted, engaging node drive. So we're going to go to down where our tanker is going to go through and as soon as this tanker goes past there, it'll refuel those Sabines, and they can keep going. Something at Hercules. All right. Oh, wow. There's just swarm everywhere right here. So you can skip past this by pressing the space button. Did it go? And if you press space again, it will bring up the sensor menu. We can't do anything in here because we don't have the right technologies. We can't highlight things. We can't give attack orders, but we can still change our view focus. Press space again to get out of it. And something that's kind of cool is you can have your ships roll to the left and right by using the open and close brackets. It's not going to do us very much good right now, but you can see him do it. Didn't even get close enough to fire. Mm. That's bad. The swarm is really bad in the very, very beginning. But not for too long. So we're going to make another note to stay away from there. And you can see right here that there's this little light blue colored thing. That represents our special projects. And we need more ships. I Commander. We will have those ships out in no time. And they are two turns away from down. So it shouldn't be too very much longer, and I'll be able to show you all how to colonize ships. Update or colonized planets. And this one's not too bad. It could be better, but it's not bad. Let's see what else is out there. They can't go anywhere. All right. But we're fixing to get some refueled ships, and every time one of your ships lands on a colony of yours, they get their fuel refilled. Man, that's a long node line right there. How far is that? 27.4. We couldn't make that even if we tried. That's just a little outside the range of our extended range ships. But our research is done. And something I didn't see earlier is we have light emitters, which are great at taking out tiny, tiny swarms of things. Like, like destroyers or the swarm. But that's 14 turns out. And that's not really good. So I want to work on cybernetic interface to give us more efficient shipbuilding and even more industrial output from all of our worlds. Research computers online. Labs fully staffed. And now that we have hammerheads and green lasers, we want to go back into our ship design and the hammerhead gives you two weapons up front 
and if you click up here it'll show you their firing arcs. This is where rolling your ships really helps. If you've got slow firing weapons you can fire on one side, roll the ship, fire the same fire the other weapon system at the same target. And then we just right click green lasers to send it to the same on yes, everywhere. And if you don't change the name it'll just give you a nice little Mark II designator at the end of it and we remove the first one. And one other nifty bonus of the hammerhead module is if you look up here at the tactical and turning speed they go up by a little bit which is never not bad. Okay and now that we're done designing new ships and we've got a whole lot of Sabines. We're gonna combine these three ships into this fleet of three to give us a fleet to send here Navigation, set course. and a fleet to send there. And they can make this trip even though it's further than their range because there's a tanker sitting right here waiting to refuel them. Now before we colonize this planet right here, we want to break off one colony ship and send him over there, because we there are things called colony traps that will suck your ship down into the planet and wipe out your entire colonizing fleet. Better to lose one ship than your entire colony fleet, that way you're guaranteed to colonize it two turns later. And you don't want to just send them the very next turn, because as soon as you do that, you're going to have your your main fleet will land at the same time your scout colonizer is s triggering the colony trap and you'll lose everybody anyway so just go ahead and wait two turns and let's build some more colonizers all right okay now that I'm done fixing all of the ship designs that I just erased we're going to go back to our home world and build more ships. And we want more colonizers. Because even though they're not ideal worlds, they're not that bad. We just need a better way to get here. That's alright. We'll figure something out. And you can see that these guys have 12 fuel, which isn't an awful lot, but we only have one Trinity, and it doesn't have a whole lot of fuel to it. They only carry enough to refuel 10 destroyers completely from empty. So we are going to take these guys and send them to however you say that. System update. And that's really not a good planet right there. Drive to force. And since this is about to be a colony, we can go ahead and send this ship here to refuel, and by the time they get there, everything should be fine. One turn to get there, two turns. System update. So we go ahead and click special and colonize. Colony status free. And this guy is going to try and colonize, and if there is a colony trap, he'll trigger it. There we are. No, that's still node space. Quit that. Now we're going to break the Trinity off and send the rest of our Colorados Aye, up here sir. to Thieves to colonize it. And we can send these guys down here for some more fuel and keep the colony ball rolling. Shipyards getting up. Now, are we good? I cannot read that, but that's that's Marigi right there. So, first contact with an alien race. Let's see what's going to happen. 
and an asteroid monitor. All right. Well, sucks to be a bird man right now, because I'm fixing to take him out and try and claim this asteroid monitor for my own and hope that he doesn't have the research power to do that himself. Because it would be real bad to have an unfriendly asteroid monitor this close to everywhere I'm trying to work at. It's not a very good planet, but it is still colonizable. Alright, and this is a Marigi ship. I think it's still a scout ship, because that looks an awful lot like explodable fuel right there. And that's where we're going to target. How nice of him to shoot at me. Let's return the favor. Yep, that was an enemy extended range. Their fuel containers blow up just as easily and as powerfully as ours. So now that that's done, and we've declared peace with the asteroid monitor, hopefully, hopefully combat will end soon. System. So combat didn't end soon, and that was a fun way to waste a couple of minutes. But we have another asteroid monitor that we can try and take control of. On a not terribly good planet, but we'll make do. Hmm. Point six. I don't want to sit right there on that asteroid monitor and just get into combat after combat and keep losing ships. So what we're going to do is park right beside it by trying to go here and we can't make it but we will move just far enough off to the side that we can stop them next turn because they're completely out of gas and can't go anywhere and we don't have a trinity that's there just yet but we will be fixing that Alright, and now this is your brand new planet. You can see the climate hazard is going down and every every destroyer sized colonizer you land increases infrastructure by one. There's our imperial population and you can see that it's costing us money right now. Now the faster you get your planet down to a manageable climate hazard, the more people you get there and the more people will work on getting your planet up and running. So in the beginning, terraforming is way more effective than building infrastructure. If you need infrastructure in a hurry, you can always send colonizers from another planet to give a point of infrastructure each. And that's pretty much all there is to it. That's how you colonize planets, that's how you fiddle around with your colonies, that's how you make enemies out of birds, that's how you get ships just far enough off of a planet that they can still see what's happening with their sensors. Everything that's in these little bubbles is what your ships can see. So he's just far enough off to not be on the planet, but still let you know if someone tries to show up and get right over there to fight if he needs to. And that's pretty much everything we've got for right now, so see you next time.